there's whiskey inside my veins I'm feeling heavy and I can't explain how I feel for you You got me dizzy and I'm feeling blue Let's go walking in the city tonight You wear the dress that makes you look so nice Like my fancy shoes I wore them just for you Tell me why all the good ones go well, I don't know. So how did I end up here? How did I end up with a college degree and student loans and skills that I could get a traditional job with, but why am I working minimum wage at a coffee shop? You know, that's a question I kind of asked myself, but I kind of realized sometimes in life our dreams change and our goals change and that's okay. It's okay in life to pivot and there's not this one path that everyone has to go on. So we're kind of conditioned by society to do certain things. It's like, oh, you just go to high school, go to college, get a job, get married. Like it's kind of like this path that everyone thinks this is the path when in reality entrepreneurship was never really something that was given as an opportunity but it's one that I wanted to go on and I finally gathered the courage to go on it after so much resistance and internal battles and so part of my working at the coffee shop is a step for myself on that path. But just for some more context on how I found myself to this point in my life, I did put out videos previously of moving from New York City, losing my job, living with my parents at age 30, and all of these were just steps along the pathway to the ideal life that I want for myself ultimately. And these might be seen as steps backwards. It's like, oh, you're moving back in with your parents and you're working minimum wage. Well, all of these things are just ways to step forward to the ultimate goal. Words that Gary Vaynerchuk said that really stuck with me was sometimes in life you have to take a step backwards to take a step forward for the rest of your life. And that's probably the best way to describe this season of my life. Why are you not willing to take one step backwards for a step for the rest of your life? This thought that so many of you are miserable and you're in golden handcuffs because you make 180 a year and you have mortgages and you have the car payments. So many of you are unhappy and you're not willing to take one step back, both financially but more importantly emotionally. You're worried what other people think if you sell your home and you rent an apartment. You're worried what other people think if you actually bring back your Mercedes and re-lease a Toyota. You're worried about if you move back in with your parents or if you're not married to the job at 31. How are you not willing to take a step backwards because of other people's opinions and willing to ruin the next 47 years of your life? Take a step backwards. It's the smartest move. You've got your whole life in front of you and you're worried about other people's judgments if you're living in your parents' home or you're driving not as fancy of a car. So when I was living in New York City, I was doing full-time graphic design slash marketing. So I was working from home for a while during the pandemic in New York. But then when my job, when they laid us all off, I kind of had to reassess. And I talked about this before in my video. Do I want to just be on this hamster wheel of like working a nine to five job, paying off, paying rent, paying my bills? This never ending constant cycle of life when it's like, is this really the life that I wanted for myself truly? Or is this just the life that I kind of fell into and have to continue on. Whereas I really wanted to do my video career. All throughout college I had jobs, well I had an in internship in graphic design, and I had jobs doing retail, food service, every single job you can imagine in those areas. And I told myself, I'm so miserable, I never want to work these jobs ever again. And I worked with people sometimes who had college degrees and they were working in these retail and food service jobs. And I was thinking to myself, that will never be me, like you will never catch me going through all the work of like going through college, getting your degree, and then you're just back kind of living the life of someone who doesn't have a degree. But now I understand, I'm a kind of, it's like hindsight now, thinking maybe we all have different goals and the nine to five job isn't the goal that everyone wants to go on. And some people don't enjoy just sitting at an office all day. Some people do, that's great, but some people don't. So you just have to find what works for you. And it is a little bit of an ego thing some people refuse to work these jobs because it's like a blow to their ego. It's like, I'm smart and I have my college degree and I'm gonna get this high prestigious job. Whereas 
maybe it's okay to just work at a coffee shop or work in a fast food restaurant if that's what you want to do and on the side you're building your business and you're creating something for yourself a lesson that i learned in life is to not do things for other people because your family might have expectations for you your friends might have expectations when you meet strangers you might think that they're judging you or they have this idea of what your life should be and then you might not live up to their expectations of you but in reality everyone's always going to judge you for what you do and you have to choose the life path that's best for you because at the end of the day you're the one sitting your butt in that chair and all day nine to five in that office job that you might hate but you're like hey I have my degree so this is what I should be doing or your parents force you to be a doctor or a lawyer is the pain of disappointing your parents or society or friends or whoever is that pain of disappointing them greater than the pain you'll experience being deeply unhappy with your job and your life I have this realization I need to do what's best for me and what I know will bring me the most fulfillment and happiness and aligned with my values not with what I think I should be doing or what whoever makes the rules of society thinks I should be doing but we have to just live our most authentic selves same thing with making YouTube videos so many people are like oh I would make videos but people might make fun of me or judge me or yeah they, they're going to like your friends might be like oh you're so corny that's so funny you're making videos you're talking to a camera you're you know like I've had people tell me that stuff before and I'm like this is what I love to do so I'm gonna keep doing it and yeah maybe it's corny people might think whatever of it or they kind of make these comments like oh are you still doing your little YouTube videos yeah I am and I'm happy and I love doing this so find something you enjoy if people are gonna make fun of you Oh well, that's gonna happen. At least you can go to bed at night knowing that you're living your most fulfilled, happy life on your own terms, which is my ultimate goal. So yeah, going back to my decision to leave New York, I did. I made a video talking about this, but my ultimate goal is to just forge my own path and to focus on my video career, which is what I always wanted to do, but I never actually started doing it. So I figure moving with my parents, save money paying rent, buy new camera gear, which I have done all of that and I spent the last few years learning, developing my skills, making videos. I was doing freelance work here and there. I was doing just these like one-off projects. I was doing free work. I was kind of like going down all these different paths. Like maybe I'll be a wedding videographer. Maybe I'll do this and that. And I was kind of going into these different fields when I realized I need to stay focused and I want to be great and I want to be known for one thing, which is what's leading me now to focus on the real estate niche. And before this, I actually did get a job full-time here in Tampa working, doing videography, but quickly realized that that was not a healthy environment to be in. And that really prompted me to kind of take a step back from everything that I was doing, thinking, why am I just out here finding all these gigs, doing whatever I can do, trying to make money, doing these video jobs with like anyone and everyone who would offer me the opportunity when I really want to only work with people who I'm aligned with and who I want is a good fit for me to work with. And I really want to start my own business so that I can create things on my own terms and it's all my vision that I'm fulfilling, not someone else's vision that I might not align with. So yeah, that's when I took the job at the coffee shop just to give myself a buffer to have money coming in. That way I would have guaranteed income each week and be able to focus on studying for my drone license and building my business. And the whole studying for my drone test took way longer than it should have. And now I'm on this journey of starting my business, which is taking way longer than it should. And I feel like I'm always in this point of life where I'm moving in slow motion, which obviously it's not a race to the finish line, but you really do want to be motivated and be disciplined and use your time wisely because we do have limited time on this earth. The clock is just ticking and time is moving on. And I feel like each year that goes by, I'm just, another year of not being closer to my goals. So 2023, this is the year. I'm not gonna let this year go by and at the end of it, look back and be like, wow, I wasted so much time. I was just, you know, working these part-time jobs, which I am now. I have a new part-time job, which I'm so happy about because it's flexible and it gives me more time in my calendar to do other things. I'm at a point now where I don't wanna be chasing down any and every freelance video job or even full-time video job working for someone out of desperation for money. It's like, oh, I'll just do whatever just to make money. I don't want to be in that position anymore. So that's what prompted me to work a job outside of the field just to have money coming in. I really don't want to operate ever out of scarcity. And I really did focus on my YouTube channel as well. My creative living documentary series, which I'm super proud of and I had so much fun doing that. But at the end of the day, it didn't fully take off 
I mean, it was always a passion project, but I was always hoping secretly that my videos would take off a little bit more than they did and that I would be able to generate like some more revenue from it. Obviously, I wasn't doing it for the money, but that's always in the back of your head. It's like, hey, if this could take off, that would be great. I ended up putting a little too much pressure on my YouTube channel when I kind of wish I started just focusing more on my entrepreneurship journey sooner and providing a service and a value to people rather than just putting out videos hoping that they would gain more traction. Things have not been taking off as quickly as I wanted them to so I continued working at the coffee shop studying in my downtime I really honestly dragged out this process and it took me much longer than it should have mostly out of fear I feel like I'm the person who needs as much information and as much preparation before diving into everything which can be kind of a toxic trait because then it just forces me to not take action because I'm just trying so hard to just be overly prepared so yeah I basically had to chain myself to my desk and just study for that drone test I have a whole video about that as well finally got that done which I'm really happy about I'm gonna just edit this little segment in here because I feel like I didn't explain fully I didn't really give myself enough grace of why I was procrastinating pushing it off I went through some really really heavy mental health struggles during that time and it made it to the point where I was just in survival mode and I was just trying to get through each day and it might sound dramatic, but the suicidal ideation got so strong and so persistent and the depression was so heavy that it was just like you're walking through dark fog every day and you're trying to just make it through each day. So mental health was crumbling. It was really difficult. Of course, I mean, you can't really think about starting a business and putting in the work. Any friendships, any relationships, family, I kind of just dropped off for a while and just was focused on trying to keep myself alive which was took like all my physical and mental energy and I've struggled with this in my life various times but this was the worst it's ever been so that was rough and the thing that got me through was actually opening up to select number of friends about it who actually were really helpful and didn't dismiss me and say like oh well like have you tried just being grateful because blah 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 like oh you should just be happy because other people have it worse than you but no I had such good friends during this time who were supportive and understood and reached out and helped like offered support and offered to help me reach out to find therapists to get me through and during this time also the suicide hotline came out you could just dial 988 literally that alone saved me like having having that there knowing that was a resource for me all these things are just so helpful anyone who struggles with depression and mental health issues knows that sometimes simple tasks like getting into the shower seems like such an enormous task like the most mundane little easy things in life just seem like the biggest mountain to climb over and I don't really know if I'm explaining it correctly but I feel like if you know you know you understand and if you don't you won't understand and you're gonna be like what why how like huh like just snap out of it just pull yourself out of it just be happy it's not that simple and I wish more people understood and that's kind of why I want to be more open about it just to help people get a little bit inside my head it's kind of hard to explain and it's hard to talk about even because I know that the comments are gonna come like what like you seem so happy that's why it can honestly be so triggering to me when you hear of a suicide in the news of someone who seems like they have a great family they seem so happy on the outside like what they were happy they were they seem fine i honestly hate when people say oh you just never know because usually someone has tried to open up but the response is you're so happy you have such an amazing family and all this stuff so that makes it even worse so yeah i just wanted to add this little segment in there to give some further clarification and kind of paint a more accurate picture of what I've been going through and so now I'm at the point in my journey now where I'm holding myself accountable for my entrepreneurship journey so that's why I'm starting to document that because it really does help me I did that with my fitness journey as well making the videos showing the process really helps me stay accountable and on track because the truth is when you're working for yourself when you're trying to work for yourself there's no boss there's no one telling you what to do there's no one forcing you to show up to work every day you have to show up for yourself because you are your own boss so I'm really practicing getting in that mindset so yeah I left the job working at the coffee shop started babysitting my nephew more full-time and then that kind of became my next thing 
was doing that and now that my sister's on maternity leave now I finally have time this is the time I'm like okay all this time I was just working 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 part-time jobs doing different things saying that like oh I'm gonna start my business I'm gonna start doing this and truthfully it's so easy to get distracted by working part-time jobs doing other things when you know every day it's like okay when am I gonna start when am I gonna start it's like okay I'll start I have this afternoon I'm gonna go do stuff but in reality it's so easy to just keep pushing it off pushing it off but now now's the time I'm like okay focusing my sister's on maternity leave having her next baby so now I have time to focus on my business